Hi there, good afternoon, and thanks for joining us. Uh, we're going to do a quick Washington presentation, look ahead, and training. Uh, hopefully give you all the information you need for next week's big event. Uh, we've been uh, talking about it on staff uh, most of the morning, and we're looking very much forward to it. So thank you for taking some time to be with us today. Um, I'm Molly Day, VP of Public Affairs here at NSBA. Uh, I've got a couple other staff members joining me who are here to answer your questions uh, and hopefully uh, walk you through some of what to expect. So next, I'm going to turn it over to Sun. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Sun Tash. I am the Director of Operation. And um Glad to have everybody here, and we will have a lot of presentation with the Washington next week. And if you have any questions, we'll be here to answer your question. Uh, we is passing out to you. Good morning, everybody. Thanks so much. Yeah, we are thrilled to have everybody coming down. We're looking forward to a great event. We are actively working on uh, finalizing all the schedules with the Hill meetings and uh, looking forward to a great event. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you. And Ian, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Yeah, thank you, Molly. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Ian Elsenbach here, Manager of Member Outreach. Um, I believe that most of you have uh, or should be familiar with me, and, and I'm sure I've been blowing up your inboxes for months now. So uh, it's great to see you here, and I look forward to getting to meet or see each and every one of you in person next week. Thank you. Hey. I'm looking forward to it. Thanks, Ian. I'm going to ask everybody to mute your lines if you could. We've got quite a few people on the line. We just want to make sure we're not getting too much um, feedback or anything. Um, let's go ahead and jump right in. <clears throat> what I will tell you, um, I've got a schedule in front of you. This has already changed a bit, and right, we just didn't. It, things are constantly changing, and that's one thing you're going to hear from Reed nonstop over the next week about um, trying to get people on the hill to to pick a date or pick a time or stick with that date or time is is a challenge. So. Um, but this will give you kind of a general idea. If you go to our website, we do have it updated there, but if you go to our website um, and click on the Washington presentation uh, button, and then we'll have a, you can download a PDF schedule that has a little bit more detail than this. Um, but generally we're gonna start registration at 10 o'clock. That'll go to about 11.30. Uh, then we'll jump into our awards luncheon where we get to announce uh, for the first time publicly our overall uh, award winner for the Lou Shattuck uh, Small Business Advocate of the Year Award. Uh, we're going to hear from the chair and our president uh, kind of talking, giving you a detailed uh, idea of what to expect over the next 48 hours. Uh, and then we'll jump into our administration briefing. And that's going to be at about 1.15. So we're going to have quick lunch. Um, that's uh, 11.30 or excuse me, 11.30 to 1. Then we're going to go jump on some buses and we're going to head over to the Department of Commerce. Uh, we will not be at the White House this year, and, and it's uh, for a good reason, which is there is so much interest and we're simply too big to fit into the um, the White House uh, auditorium that they have there for us. So they reserved a really cool auditorium at the Department of Commerce. It's a really neat space. I think you guys are really going to like it. So we're going to head over there for the administration briefing. Uh, we do have top officials from the White House, Treasury and Commerce, who are going to be talking to us about all kinds of um, important small business things. I think we're going to touch on some procurement. Um, some different small business services and, and a lot of great things that the administration uh, would like to talk to you about. So after that, <clears throat> we're going to stay in that auditorium and do a, an issues up um, issues update and, uh, and policy kind of kind of backgrounder. Um, you're going to hear from Reed and Todd, who will talk to you about the key issues we want you to talk to your members of Congress about um, and the following day's meetings when you're up on the Hill. And then we're going to hear from our friends over at the PRISM group, and they're going to talk federal contracting. Um, if you missed their presentation, at the Small Business Congress back in um, February, was it this year, last year? I'm sorry, I'm getting, it's, it's all running together at this point. Um, but they they get some really great insight about federal contracting, and I think you'll get some good information from that as well. Um, then we're going to hop on buses, head back to the hotel, and have a nice reception. Um, we're going to have some good hors d'oeuvres, some drinks, the sun's got us all taken care of. And then after that, we're going to um, walk together up to the Alamo Draft House for a premiere exclusive screening of a movie that's not out until October called The Burial. That's starring Tommy Lee Jones and Jamie Foxx. It's a movie that's going to be in limited release in theaters and then on Amazon. Um, but you guys all get to see it about a month early. Um, it's about a funeral home director who uh, is kind of getting taken advantage of and taken over by a corporate behemoth and and the story of, of how he kind of fought back. And it's based on a real story. So I think it'll be a, a fun night for us. So um, we're going to walk up to the Alamo Draft House, watch a movie. They'll, they'll spring for some popcorn and drinks for all of us. And I think it'll be kind of a fun way for us to, you know, talk about the importance of small business and spend some time together after our reception. Then the next morning, <clears throat> don't be fooled by the eight o'clock here. We're going to get you up very early 
on Thursday morning and, and I'll apologize now. And, and I'm told that the, the hotel has great coffee. So we're actually going to be meeting in the lobby of the hotel at 645 and being on time is of critical importance. So we need everybody to be down at the hotel in the lobby, 645, ready to go. That includes being checked out of the hotel if you're not staying Thursday night and, and they'll, they've got accommodations so that we can store our bags with them. Just make sure that you talk to them about that upon check-in. Um, so um, realistically, you're probably going to want to get out of your rooms by about 630 if you're checking your bags there. When we get on the buses, we're going to head up to Capitol Hill. It's a lovely place called Top of the Hill. It's right next to the Supreme Court, right across the street from the Capitol. And it's it's a beautiful space. We'll be up, I think, on the fifth floor, have a great view of the Capitol. Uh, and we've got, I think, six members of Congress. Reed's been working overtime, getting some great members of Congress to come in and talk to us. They'll come in, uh, you know, give you their spiel, take your questions, talk to you about, you know, what their small business priorities are. And a lot of times they'll give you some tips and insight in terms of what you're, you know, talking to the meetings and or, you know, who you're talking to in these meetings and, and how you can really get your point across. So that can be a really impactful um, time there as well. So again, that's um, 645, bright and early. Um, and we're going to have you out late the night before. So you, you just all have to sleep when, when you get home on Friday and Saturday. Um, after the breakfast, we're going to be doing a delegation picture at the Capitol. Um, we've scouted out a really great place that we're going to be able to walk to quickly, um, get everybody kind of staggered up on some steps, get a great picture of the Capitol in the background. It'll be a wonderful piece for you guys to use for marketing. It'll be great for us to use for marketing, too. So we're going to get a nice picture of the delegation. Uh, and then you'll head out on your Capitol Hill meetings, which Reed and, and his, his cohort, Paul, have been working overtime on scheduling. Uh, we're not scheduling any meetings before 1030, so you have ample time to to get that delegation picture, get whatever pictures of your own that you'd like to, to snap. Um, certainly the staff will be there and, and happy to grab your iPhones and take pictures of you in front of the Capitol. So then you'll head out to your meetings on Capitol Hill. <coughs> Pardon me, Reed's gonna talk a bit more about this. Um, and then you'll be there for the rest of the day. Um, and, and then after that, you're kind of on your own to get back to the hotel if that's where you, where you end up leaving your bag. Um, which again, we really recommend you do that because you don't want to be taking a suitcase in and out of the different security, um, especially schlubbing it across the Capitol. Uh, I don't know if you had been to the Capitol, you know, prior to about eight years ago, but you used to be able to ride the little subway underneath and you no longer, no longer can do that. So you're going to have to exit every building, go out, go back in through security to whatever building you're going to be in. So it's a lot of walking. It's a lot of security. You definitely don't want to have your suitcases. So um, that's basically what the, what it's going to look like. So when you're done with your Capitol Hill meetings, you can come back to the hotel and hang out. Um, you can come just grab your bags and head to the airport, whatever you need to do. If you have questions about, um, you know, how long it's going to take to get to Dulles or how long it's going to take to get to national, um, find somebody on staff and we're happy to answer those questions for you. So with that, Reed, I'm going to turn it over to you to talk a little bit more about their meetings. Thanks very much, Molly. I appreciate it. Realizing I flubbed my introduction before. Hi, everybody. I'm Reed Westcott. I'm the Director of Federal Policy here. Um, I handle our government affairs operations and uh, have the privilege of uh, coordinating all the Hill meetings for uh, everybody here. Um, so uh, we're, we're trying to set up as many Hill meetings as possible for the folks that requested them. Um, uh, we have uh, put in the uh, request for House and Senate folks. Ideally, we're going to try to get both senators and the House member for everybody's home address that they provided. So thanks to everybody on the call who, who sent that in. That's critical. Um, because of the nature of, of, of folks' schedules on the Hill, there's probably going to be other folks in your meeting with you. Uh, there's a lot of cases where we have one individual who uh, has a member of Congress all of themselves, but um, don't be surprised if you've got other folks kind of joining you, making a, making a crowd, representing small business uh, across, the, across the spectrum. Um, so we're going to try to make sure that um, everybody sits together with their state and district uh, kind of counterparts at the luncheon, just to make sure that we kind of got uh, state representation covered, that folks kind of are talking about similar issues, um, and that when you go into your meetings, especially with uh, the Senate delegation, that you guys are reading from the same sheet of music and going in as, as one united front. Um, so that, that'll be fantastic. Um, apologies. I, I know folks love to know exactly what they're doing and where they're going to be every moment of the day. Trust me, I'm, I'm one of those people, too. I, I love to wake up and know exactly what I'm doing a week ahead of time. Um, but the problem is members of Congress and their staff are, are a bit persnickety. <laughs> It is hard to tack them down exactly when you need them to. Uh, we have a feeling that everything's going to be continually shifting uh, for most of the duration of uh, of uh, the the remaining time before we uh, actually kind of get up there on the hill. But so we will make sure that you have a schedule finalized um, when everything is is set there, when you kind of hit the ground and get here. Um, that's why we made sure to include in the form kind of when your last uh, meeting flexibility was, just make sure we weren't uh, kind of uh, that we were respective of your time. Um, 
So uh, to Molly's point, um, escorts are no longer required, but there are uh, certain procedures in different parts of the hill that are a little bit restrictive. So like she was saying, you used to be able to take this fun little subway. It's these cute little crawls that used to look like something at Disney World um, between some of the different uh, office buildings. Now they've shut those down. Those are a little bit more secure. They're just for staff and members. Um, so that's a little bit difficult. The good news is uh, when you have multiple meetings, so let's say you have a meeting with uh, both of your senators and they don't happen to be in the same building. They're maybe uh, across one of the three Senate office buildings. There are tunnels that you can walk through between those. Um, and we'll make sure that you have the information for that. And there's also, a, it's, it's also very, very easy to walk out, walk down the block and walk straight in the next building if, if you prefer and you don't wanna get lost in the tunnels. Um, so we've also tried to make sure that when we're scheduling these meetings, we're giving you 15, 20 minutes at least just to make sure you're getting from place to place safely. I know it's not a big campus, um, but we want to make sure we're respective of everybody's time that you're going to have the time you need when you do this. Um, so, uh, the office, um, uh, and staff are going to want to know if you're running late or if you have some conflict, um, just like we are. So please, please do let us know. We'll make sure uh, we have contact info for some of our NSBA staff, um, that you can, that you can reach on the day of. Uh, but also we'll provide contact info for the front office for whoever you're meeting with. And it's, it'd be good to make sure that they just know that whether you uh, are running a couple minutes late, whether you can no longer make it, whatever's going on with your schedule, just to make sure that uh, we're respective of what they're, what they're doing as well. Um, can we pop on the next one? So these are the priority issues that we want to make sure that we are discussing with everybody at all our meetings, uh, all the way across the hill. These are the four things that uh, our board of trustees has identified as the major priorities that we think we can get some action on right now in this Congress, or at least that we can contribute to in a really, really meaningful way. So we're trying to brand uh, our tax push as tax fairness because we want to make sure that small businesses are treated the same way as large businesses. That we're not, we're not, uh, we're not asking for anything above and beyond uh, the the treatment we've historically enjoyed. We want to make sure that uh, that folks are are able to enjoy all the the benefits that they've been getting. So the first thing up there is the 199A deduction. This is the pass through uh, deduction that a lot of folks avail themselves of. Uh, given I know a large uh, proportion of the small business community are passed through entities. This is a particularly important one. This will expire if not reauthorized. So the, the issue here is during the 2017 tax cuts um, and TCJ, the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, um, it was uh, it, the uh, there was a 20% a, a deduction that was put into place um, for folks that operated pass through entities to kind of align with the historic uh, incentives uh, to operate a pass through versus the C Corp. Um, the problem was while the C Corp big corporate tax cuts were permanent, um, the uh, S Corp and pass through uh, tax cuts with 199A were not. So they were they're set to raise again to their pre 2017 levels to help pay for the tax cuts given to larger corporations. So we want to make sure that we're being treated fairly, that all small businesses get a fair shake at this. And this is a really big issue for us. Another one is R and D amortization. So I know uh, this this may not touch every business on on the line here, but I know for folks that are involved in the R and D space, it's enormous. Um, if you and your business are are operating there and you want to talk about the one versus five year amortization issue, that is that is a really really uh, important thing. We know we've got uh, bipartisan and bicameral support on that. We've heard from Democrats and Republicans um, in both chambers that they're supportive um, on ways and means on the House side, which is uh, kind of the the most powerful committee that we're working on this. Um, the uh, ranking members of the Democratic leader uh, responding to a, a package that was put together by the Republican chairman said that his caucus would be very, very open to negotiation on R&D and that that's one of their issues that they're going to compromise on. So as we see a spending package start to coalesce here, we want to make sure that uh, things like that are included in. Uh, next, with the Credit Card Competition Act. So for folks that haven't heard me talk until I'm blue in the face about this one, this is a big one for us right now. Uh, it's a big one for a lot of folks in D.C. So this tackles uh, credit card routing issues. So uh, right now there are two companies, um, and I'm uh, sorry, not Amex. Uh, Amex is part of the, the uh, spectrum here, but they're, they're, they don't hold significant market share. Uh, Visa and MasterCard hold about an 80% market share of all of the processing of credit card transactions in the country. Um, that enables them to charge basically whatever fee they so choose for folks to operate on their service. And if you're if you're swiping a card that you, that says Bank of America, but has a little Visa logo down in the corner, um, you're getting dinged with a fee every time you swipe that uh, that goes straight to uh, straight to Visa, not even to Bank of America. Um, and a lot of folks don't know that's there, but it, it hurts a lot of small businesses, especially front end retail. I know a lot of folks have gone into a, a pizza shop, a convenience store, whatever, and seen a little sign that says, sorry, no credit cards uh, under five, 10, 15 dollars, whatever it is, because the uh, the burden of those swipe fees becomes so huge on those businesses, they can either and either eat into their bottom line or just stop taking that part of their business. We want to make sure that it's fair for everybody. And that uh, these uh, these big uh, financial institutions are not unfairly profiting off the backs of small businesses. 
Um, it's, it's particularly timely because they actually just announced that they're raising those fees. They're already at a record $160 billion for last year. They're raising them by another $500 million uh, projected for next year. So uh, it's, it's, it's a shame, but it's, it means we're, uh, we're acting right in the right time, and there's a lot of congressional focus on this right now. Uh, next thing up for us is the Corporate Transparency Act. This is huge for NSBA. Um, folks that may or may not know, um, we actually uh, sued over this uh, last year, and we're awaiting uh, a court decision uh, that uh, had or oral arguments closed back in May. Uh, the Corporate Transparency Act is this uh, quasi-regulatory framework that was passed as part of the uh, National Defense Authorization Act. Um, big banks had been uh, lobbying for a few years to try to get this across the line to make sure that they could ship uh, financial reporting requirements from their, uh, their risk folks, their, their compliance folks onto their small business owners and their small business customers. Um, we, we don't think that that's fair. Um, the idea of the CTA in the first place was to combat money laundering by just basically tracking uh, beneficial ownership, who, who's in charge of a company, try, try to see where the money's flowing, who's really in control of something, even if they're not listed on the documents. Um, and while we, while we think that's fantastic, uh, most of the information that, these, uh, that, that the government's looking for has to be disclosed to a bank when you open an account anyway. So they're sitting on the information. They just don't want to be the ones responsible for passing it out to the federal government. Um, so they, they, they snuck that into the NDAA so that uh, that would shift the requirement onto us. We don't believe it's constitutional. We believe it's uh, it, it overly burdens small businesses and is an overreach of, of what the government can actually do there, um, as well as kind of violates some of uh, some some uh, rights uh, against uh, search and seizure. Um, but we have we have more detailed information on that. There's a fantastic uh, one pager on our website that you can read up on that. And we will definitely be talking about the CTA at great length uh, before we send folks up into meetings just to make sure that everybody's ready. Um, Good news is there's been some recent meetings on that, uh, some hearings on the Hill. Uh, there was a hearing about the beneficial ownership uh, information requirements uh, very, very recently. So folks are paying attention to this. They're watching this. And we have a really, really good opportunity now to help drive home that message. Um, and then the last thing on our slate here is filling the SBA chief counsel for advocacy role. So um, there's been a number of key positions open at SBA uh, for, for years now. The chief counsel is one of them. It's been effectively open since 2017. Um, the chief counsel for advocacy is basically the, uh, the small businesses, uh, representative at the SBA, if you will. So as SBA and, and other, uh, federal agencies are starting to, uh, work to implement regulations, um, the chief counsel for advocacy is the, the, uh, the actor in the process who jumps in for small businesses and says, hold on, what's the impact here? We want to make sure this isn't unduly burdening folks. They help us cut through red tape and make sure that small businesses are getting a fair shake because we, again, don't have the regulatory and compliance uh, capabilities of many, many large corporations. Um, <clears throat> this role currently has uh, someone acting in the position, um, but that is, as I'm sure everybody on the call knows, not the same thing as actually having someone in the job. <laughs> someone, someone acting is not the same thing as a, as a firm hand on the wheel. So we want to make sure that we have someone in there fighting for small businesses every single day. Um, so that's really a priority for us. Um, right now, we haven't even had a nominee. So we want to urge both um, senators uh, to confirm a nominee if one comes through. But then also, as you're talking to folks, just try to make sure you're uh, reinforcing that we want the administration to nominate somebody. We want to make sure we have somebody to support and to get into this role. Um, so those are our main uh, priority issues for, for this Washington presentation. Um, hopefully, uh, hopefully that was a good, good little run through for you folks. We'll make sure we go over a greater length later. We'll have plenty of detail for you, but we're looking forward to it. Pop on the next one. Yeah, Rain, if you don't mind me jumping in real quick, I've been mon monitoring the chat and I've had several people asking about will we get this information? And we have a, we have like full page issue briefs. And Rain has also put together um palm cards, which is it's a small little thing you could put in your pocket, it has the key talking points um <laughs> uh that, that you can pull out of your, your jacket or your briefcase and and talk to the people about. So we will get you all this information. Um, we'll have it for you at registration. We'll also be sending out either tomorrow or first thing Friday morning uh, a what to expect email to everybody. So we'll send out um, this video of this call for people who missed it. Uh, we'll send out the issue briefs that you need to know, um, what you should wear, all the etiquette and all that other good information that you're going to need. And that will include our schedule and addresses. I know there are a lot of questions about people who are local or who are not staying at the hotel. We will get you addresses and times of where you need to be in our more detailed schedule. So um, hang tight. Just know that that is coming, like I said, either tomorrow or first thing Friday, but we'll have it all to you then. And once again, we'll have it for you when you register at the hotel. Um, so with that, Reed, I'll give it back to you. Thanks very much, Molly. I appreciate it.
Um, so one thing to know about getting around Capitol Hill, um, it is it's it's going to be warm. <laughs> it's right now it's it's in the 90s and hundreds here. It's going to hopefully cool off a little bit by then. But you want to make sure you're comfortable. Um, everybody does need to be formal. We want to make sure that everybody is uh, is is dressed to impress. Uh, coats and ties for the gentlemen, dresses and similar for the ladies. Um, but you also want to make sure you're prepared. So um, comfortable shoes. One of one of my tricks is I I love those those Cole Hans that folks wear with a sneaker sole. Those are a lifesaver for me every day. Let me tell you right now. Um, so, uh, there's, there's going to be a lot of walking around, a lot of standing. Um, if, if the weather looks inclement, make sure you have an umbrella or an overcoat. Um, just, you can bring that with you, leave it at the hotel room if it looks like everything's going to be clear, but it's good to make sure you at least have it. Um, so like I was saying, it, it could be hot, humid and rainy, but we just want to make sure that we're all set there. Um, we will have, uh, leave behinds, um, just for you to take into meetings with you so that you can give them to the staff and make sure that in addition to what you talk about, um, they have a hard copy of what our priority issues are, just making sure that if you raised a great point in one of their meetings, they want to bring it up to someone later, they can go, oh, wait, where is that? Oh, yeah, it's right here. Um, so uh, we're trying to allow time between, um, meet, as much as 45 minutes between meetings if, we're, if you're going across uh, parts of campus, because if you're going between uh, necessarily maybe two Senate buildings, sometimes they're connected, it can be really, really easy. But if you're going from the Senate side to the House side, it's going to take a little bit of time to get there. Um, there's going to be airport style security everywhere. That's another really, really important thing for folks to be aware of. There's going to be metal detectors in every building, uh, folks coming through. It's, it's going to be, uh, shoes, shoes stay on, uh, for the most part, unless they've got kind of metal bits in them, but, um, it's, it's generally belts off everything through the, through the machine and they'll, they'll want if there are any, any issues, just be prepared for that. Um, so we, we do not have transportation range back from the Hill. Uh, I want to make sure that, uh, you just are, are prepared for that in the first place. Um, there, there's plenty of availability of taxis, Ubers, everybody knows that there's a lot of folks in the Hill at all times. So there's 435 House members, 100 Senators, and each one of them has staff. There's, there's thousands of people up there that just work there every day, not to mention all the folks like us who come up and, and try to bend their ear for a little bit. So, um, transportation is, is very, very easy from there. There's also a convenient metro if you're over on the House side. Um, and like I was saying before, make sure you let folks know um, any last minute changes you have. If, if you're a little bit late, if, if something goes wrong, if you cancel a meeting, just make sure you let them know as well as us um, so that we can make sure that everybody's uh, everybody's not waiting on you. Um, and then again, just don't be afraid to ask for directions. The Hill is an absolute maze. Like I was saying, there's tunnels, there's subways, there are back doors every which direction. Uh, it is it is a maze even for folks who've worked there for years. There's a couple of buildings in particular that I know are uh, are not folks' favorites. Um, but so many people are willing to help you, both NSBA staff and folks kind of around the hill. If you ever have questions, there's a lot of Capitol Police around too who are used to every day directing folks, running traffic left, right, and center. They're they're usually by the elevators, by the entrances, and sometimes running the halls. Worst case, if you ask a staff member, uh, they're they're more than happy to help. And and there's also usually pretty good signage. So um, with that, I think that wraps most of, most of my piece here. Happy to pass this on over here. I'm muted. Sorry about that. Um, if you did not request meetings, uh, I'm just going to walk through real quick how you can schedule those meetings now. The deadline to request meetings was last Friday. Um, and we sent out everybody an email and said, you know, let you know if you did or didn't request them. Um, and at this point, it's too late for us to start sending out those requests, but you can do it directly. And we strongly encourage you to do that. Um, on our website, if you go to our um, action center, uh, it's there's a lot of really easy ways to do it. So you go to our action alerts or um, Action Center, you'll see that it's in several tabs, uh, especially if you click on the issues, you'll see it right there. Um, you'll go to our Action Center and it'll tell you how to sign up for alerts, find legislation or find um, key officials. And that's what you're going to want to do. And what you want to do is put in your home address. Um, there's a lot of web blockers. And if your ISP isn't coming from that Congress member's district, they're not going to they're not going to get the email. They probably won't answer to it. So you're going to want to use your home district, not where your business is. And this you already have uh, an existing relationship with that person. And then in that case, you probably don't need this. So you'll just want to type in, uh, you know, your address. It'll tell you who the member of Congress is. And then it'll pop up um, <clears throat> another page. That will, um, you know, show you who it is. So Michael Bennett from Colorado, for example, uh, and then you'll click on on that link there, and it'll get you to the next page. And you can look up staff. Uh, you can just call the Capitol phone. That's what we recommend you do. Just call and ask to talk to the scheduler, see if you can get a meeting with um, somebody in their staff. 
Uh, typically, you want to ask for the small business LA or a legislative assistant, or if it's something different, if you know specifically you're talking just about healthcare or just about procurement, then you want to tell the tell the scheduler or whoever you're talking to what it is you're looking to schedule your meeting about. Um, on our um, back end platform, you can also look for staff. I think it, it looks like it's a little bit cut off here, um, but this button here, if you click on for staff, then you'll be able to um, reach out to folks that way. So the um, <clears throat> the next thing um, that we certainly encourage you to do is download the Voter Voice app. I know we all have a ton of apps. Um, feel free to download it and get rid of it once you're done. Um, but what's really nice about this is that when your schedule changes, and it's going to at some point, it's really easy to download the, the to have the Voter Voice app on your phone. And then you can just click in, um, look for the directory, and it'll pop up your member of Congress's phone number. Um, the other thing, we typically put phone numbers of your members of Congress on the schedule that we print out for you at the Washington presentation. I know Reed mentioned this and, and I'll reiterate it, that it's really important to give those folks a call if you're going to be late or if you can't make your meeting at all. Um, it, re it reflects poorly on us as an organization if people don't show up. And then next year, when you want to schedule a meeting, they're going to be less um, less likely to do that for us. So um, definitely be sure to keep people in the loop if you're um, if you're going to be late, if you're lost, it happens. It's not a big deal. Um, if all else fails, you can give the NSB office a call and we'll try and get you um, routed the way you need to be routed. So um, those are the key things that I wanted to talk to you guys about um, in terms of downloading the app and how to schedule your meetings now if you want to do that. Uh, the next thing uh, that, that we're all really excited about, um, we're doing this movie screening and it's an exclusive movie, movie screening for The Burial, uh, a movie that's going to be coming out in October. We get to see it first and we talked about it a little bit earlier, but that's going to be 7.30 to 9.30 on uh, Wednesday night. We've got a map here and all these maps are going to be included in your registration packet. It's about a 15 to 20 minute walk, not too far. If you don't want to do that walk, then certainly feel free to hop in a cab or an Uber. There's lots of them around. Uh, and then you can meet us there. Um, all the details are here. It will also be in your um, registration packet, as I mentioned. Um, if you haven't signed up for it, so the 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 little tricky thing about this is that it's, it's limited seating. Um, the theater only fits 105, uh, and we have more registrants than that. So we figured a lot of people probably will have other plans or doing other things, but we wanted to have something planned for people who don't have anything. So um, if you haven't signed up for that yet, um, there's this a link here, this Google Google form here. When we send this slide deck out, you can click on that and it'll get you registered. Or you can look for an email that came from Ian, I think um, last Friday actually, and it's got a link to that Google form in there. So look for that as well. Um, and speaking of Ian, I'm gonna turn it over to him. And I think he's gonna talk a little bit about the maps and getting around. Yeah, thank you very much, Molly. Um, I don't have anything. Um, too crazy to add here because I think that uh, Reed Westcott um, really nailed it, nailed it on the head here. But there are, again, just a few uh, details here with the Capitol Complex that we would like to discuss with you. Um, so as we can see here on this map, we have the U.S. Capitol dead center. Now that, believe it or not, is actually not necessarily where most of the business on Capitol Hill takes place. Uh, each of these members of Congress and their staff uh, have their own office in an office building that surrounds uh, the National Mall and, and the Capitol Complex. Uh, so as we can see on uh, the south side of the map here or toward the bottom, we have our uh, House office buildings. That will be where uh, members of the House of Representatives uh, will have their offices and their staff. Um, and then on the top side of the Capitol Hill Complex, uh, and wrapped around just north of the Supreme Court, uh, we will have the Senate office buildings where, of course, our senators and their staff uh, take care of business. Um, so, of course, we will be taking buses to get to Capitol Hill uh, for those who will be joining us from the hotel. Uh, so no need to worry about where to go. But uh, once we're there, um, again, south side will be that the House side and the north side will be the Senate side. Uh, it's a pretty... Uh, good walk. I uh, Molly, correct me if I'm wrong here, but I would say conservatively um, a half hour in between meetings to get from one side to the other is, is what you want to plan on. The walk itself is about 15 minutes, and that's if you're not uh, stopping to take pictures of, of all the beautiful uh, architecture and scenery around. Um, the Capitol Complex is served by two metro stations. On the House side, on the bottom side there, there is the Capitol Hill South 
uh, Metro stop, which is serviced by the blue, orange, and silver lines. Uh, we will be staying on the blue line um, uh, at our hotel there in Crystal City, so that will be uh, nice and convenient. Um, and then, as we can see at the very top of the map here, uh, the Union Station Metro uh, is on the red line, and that is just uh, three or so large city blocks uh, from the Senate side of the Capitol complex. Um, final note here, we will also be uh, taking a group photo, which we will be finalizing the details of here uh, by the end of the week, and that will be taking place somewhere at that U.S. Capitol building there in the uh, center of the map. So uh, again, no need to worry about all of this right now. We will be providing all the details that you'll need uh, when the time comes to make sure that everyone, whether you're local uh, or you're coming from out of town and staying at the hotel, uh, gets to where they need to go. Um, just to reiterate what Reed said, though, as you can see with the map here, uh, we'll be all over the place. And so I would recommend uh, wearing uh, smart but comfortable uh, footwear. Um, I, I know folks who, who do this walk in heels every day. Uh, and all the power to them, but uh, that's certainly not me, and that will never be me. Um, so, uh, Molly, do you have anything to add here on the map, or are we we ready for the next page? I think I think we're good there. I've, I've seen a couple questions about um, footwear, and the most important thing is that you get to your meetings. Um, <laughs> so don't don't kill yourself kill yourself in heels. Don't wear uncomfortable shoes. If you want to wear your Reeboks, if that feels better on your feet, wear those. Um, everybody understands that's a lot of walking and you're walking on a marble floor. So if you have any tendency to trip as I do all the time, um, just think about that. It's slippery in there too. It's, I don't want to say treacherous, but, uh, it's a lot of walking on marble steps. So yeah, where, where would your shoes are comfortable? Um, obviously we just don't want you wearing like a, a track suit, but, um, but wear, wear shoes that, that work for your feet. So, um, yeah, Ian, if you want to just touch real quick on the Metro, I think that's the next, uh, slide we have up here. Fantastic. Yeah. So as we can see here, um, we have a few metro stops that are that are relevant to where we'll be staying. Uh, we have the Washington National Airport stop that will actually be the um, be the stop that is servicing us and our hotel uh, here for this uh, for this fly in. And just for a little context about Washington, um, the the way that that Crystal City and and the Reagan National Airport work out is that we will be uh, directly across the river from the Capitol building and from uh, everywhere we will be going. Uh, we will be in the part of town that's built up a little more with with the high rises that are owned by all the uh, major companies uh, that have presences in in the Washington D.C. area, and uh, we will actually just be. Uh, just a couple of, of metro stops and probably a mile and a half as the crow flies, if that, uh, from the Pentagon. So um, it's super easy to, to get around from this metro stop, which is serviced by the blue and yellow lines. Uh, if you are flying in, it will be especially convenient <laughs> because uh, our, um, our hotel will just be uh, a stone's throw from those, those airport grounds. Promise me, it, it won't or excuse me, trust me, it won't be too noisy, so don't worry about that, but it'll be a prime location. Uh, as I mentioned, Union Station will be the metro stop for uh, the Senate side of the Capitol Hill complex, and Capitol South, or Capitol Hill South, will be uh, the metro stop for uh, the U.S. House side. Now, it generally takes, as a rule of thumb, two to three minutes between metro stops in Washington, D.C., so uh, if you're doing math, if if you'd like to visit a site or if you've got friends in town uh, that you'd like to see who are on the metro somewhere, the easy math is just uh, add up the number of stops in between you and your destination and multiply that by two to three, three being conservative, uh, and that will uh, get you your, your number as to how long it'll take to get to where you need to go. Um, Molly, do you have anything that you'd like to add here as well? No, I think that I think that covers it, Ian. Thanks. I'm gonna go ahead and stop doing the share. 
Um, I'm going to jump into a couple of questions real quick. One that I've seen several questions of, um, is somebody coming from my district? Is somebody going to be from California? Um, yes. So their main, for the most part, and, and Reed and I were talking about this earlier today, for the most part, um, there's not a lot of overlap in terms of your district. Okay. So if, if you're in Judy 2's district, you're probably going to be the only person in that meeting. Um, there is, however, a good bit of overlap within the state. So if you're from California, you're probably going to be going to meetings with four or five other people when we're talking about meeting with your senators. Now, the way we're going to group you all together is during the luncheon, which is our first event. We're going to group the tables together so everybody will have an assigned table seating and we'll group that together based on state. So if you're uh, if you're from Idaho, Montana, uh, maybe Colorado, you're going to be grouped with a couple of other states. But if there's anybody from your state, you will be grouped with them, and that's so that you can you know recognize their face, get to know each other, plan your meeting strategy, um, you know, to hear from folks who've done this before. If there's any tips, trade uh, tricks of the trade that they'd like to share, so so that's how we're going to meet. Um, get you all connected that way. Um, the, there was, uh, in terms of specific states, I don't know off the top of my head, um, uh, but we will let you know, uh, next week when you register, I think that we include that in, so you're going to get a schedule that has, you know, all the meetings we have scheduled for you, plus other people in your delegation. So all that will be written down for you. Plus we're going to sit you with them, um, at their table, uh, during the luncheon. So there was another question. I know somebody asked if Tommy Lee Jones or Jamie Foxx are going to be the movie, and I don't think so, but let's keep our fingers crossed. You never know. Um, Jamie uh, Foxx is still in the men, so he's got, he's got more important. He, he's, he's, yeah, he's, he's got a, it's, it's an excused absence. Um, <clears throat> uh, a question about visiting the White House, and I know that this is, um, on staff, we were kind of disappointed too that we don't get to go to the White House, but there physically is just not enough space for our group to fit there. And so we will not be going to the White House. There's not space. So there's not not a whole lot we could do about that. So we're going to be at Commerce. Um, but we do have some great speakers, um, even though we're not going to be at the White House. Um, and if I may um, real quick, Molly, on that mm -hmm. note, uh, the, the building that we, we will be in will, is one of the most historic buildings in Washington. Uh, we will be just a few blocks from the White House and from the Treasury. Uh, we will also be joined by uh, folks from the, the Treasury Department. And it doesn't, it doesn't get um, much bigger than this. So uh, rest assured that uh, while the, the top target is, is off the table just due to size, that we will be uh, in, in a, a splendid space and we will be uh, still getting the same high level economic uh, briefing and the same uh, VIP treatment from White House staff. That's right. Um, <clears throat> there was a question in here about um, what time to be at the hotel. Uh, registration starts at 10 o'clock on Wednesday. Uh, so if you're not staying at the hotel, just be sure you're there between 1030 and 11. Uh, I'm sorry, 10 and 1130. The luncheon starts promptly at 1130. So try and get there at least half an hour early. Uh, in terms of parking, uh, it's not great. It's not as bad as in DC or next to the Capitol, but parking near the hotel is going to be tough to find too. It'll be there, but it's not going to be cheap. So uh, if if you have a place where you can park your car and then take an Uber, that might be an easier way to do it. Um, again, parking in Crystal City is not as bad, but there's not a ton of parking at the hotel. So just be mindful of that. Um, I have a question here about um, where to how to find your elected officials. If you mouse over our website, if you go to our website, nsba.biz, on the top menu bar, it says issues. And at the very top uh, of those, the drop down, it says action alerts. Click on action alerts. And then you're going to kind of scroll um, down to the bottom there and you'll see find elected officials on the right hand side. Uh, this is in the slide deck that we're going to send to you and it'll be in the video. So we're going to send this all to you, like I said, um, tomorrow or first thing Friday morning, we'll have all that information for you. And that'll include a more detailed schedule. And I've seen a couple notes that the, there's an issue with the link. So we will get that remedied and I do apologize for that. Um, but we will get you the detailed schedule um, and we're continuing to update it on the website. So um, we appreciate your patience with that. Um, if there are real specific, I know that I've got some real specific questions in the chat. We'll monitor those and get back to you um, separately on that. I know Ian's recording this and we're going to uh, get you all the information that we can. Um, Ian, have I missed any questions in here? Am I, I'm trying to scroll through as quickly as I can. That's a good question. I think that we've we've hit most of, um, let's see, most of what we're looking for is there a 6.30 a.m. meeting for the next day. Um, no, uh, Molly, 7.30 is when breakfast nope. begins. Is that at 7? Nope. So 
So if you're going to be at the hotel at 645 on Thursday morning, you need to be in the lobby, checked out of your rooms, ready to go, unless you're staying Thursday night. So that's 645 at the hotel. If you're meeting us there, you should aim to be there um, by about 715 or 730 at the latest. I believe our first member of Congress starts at 745. So we want to have everybody in the room. Um, we want you to have your breakfast, your coffee. We know you're going to need it that early. So um, if you're not riding on the bus, try and get there by about 7.15, 7.30 at the latest. Um, it's a beautiful room, but I think there's one, maybe two elevators to get all 180 of us up to the fifth floor. So if if you're wearing your Reeboks, you can walk up the stairs. If you'd like the elevator, just know it's, it might take a little bit. So that's why we're getting such an early start to get everybody over there. Um, <clears throat> there's a question here about meeting with our SBA representatives. Uh, we don't have that scheduled. If you want to make any kind of agency meetings, um, if you do federal procurement and you want to meet with a contracting officer, we certainly encourage you to reach out to them directly. Um, NSBA is only scheduling meetings for uh, your representative and your two senators. Um, okay, the address for Thursday, we will get you the addresses and everything will be in that detailed schedule. So just hang tight on that. Um, are there any other questions anybody has right now? All um, right. Yeah, Molly, real quick, and I'm stalling here. Um, in case folks have additional questions, uh, you can, as Molly said, reach our staff. Um, I love playing uh, travel agent. That's one of my that's one of my passions and one of my specialties. Uh, any questions that you have about who else you can see in DC? Of course, we will not be scheduling those meetings uh, directly for you, but we can assist you with finding uh, where to go to make that happen. Um, anything that you have, any questions about your registration, the programming, anything else, you can reach me. Um, directly uh, via email or my direct line. And uh, I will plug that in the chat here in, in just one moment. And we do, and I know there've been a couple uh, requests for read and my information. And the reason we like everything to go through Ian is that he keeps track of everything in the database. So we know what our touch points are with everybody. And and he's he's really organized and keeps it all, all straight. So it, it helps us if you can talk to him about it. And most likely he'll be able to answer your questions. If not, then he'll, he'll send it over to me, Reed or Sun. So um, um, I think- can, can I add in on one thing? Um, I, I noticed that someone was asking you about the metro transportation from DCA to the hotel. Uh, along with the PDF, we also will include the uh, hotel instruction where you can take um, how to get to the hotel by car, metro, as well as uh, plane. There's also a free shuttle from the um, hotel to the airport DCA every 20 minutes as well too. That will be on the template that they will send to you. Thank you, Sam. Well, if, if there's any other questions, I know that Ian's information is in the chat. Reach out to us. Um, like I said, we'll be sending all this information along tomorrow or first thing Friday. Um, we really appreciate your spending some time with us today. We're looking forward to seeing everybody next week and uh, safe travels. And we'll see you in about a week. Thanks. Bye.